Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for being so patient with me while I work on a whole bunch of other personal projects and stuff. I haven't been able to get to the channel and make new videos, but I figured I would do this massive video dump of a bunch of different things that I've been working on over the last couple months. Uh, so to start off, this is one of the one of the main things that kind of got me started here. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more in my next video about where this ends up going to. Uh, but this is a very basic, um, web TCP server client application that allows multiple computers to talk to one another uh, over a network. Um, it's real simple. It uses a super simple TCP uh, library, which if you go to your NuGet packages, uh, you can find it right here, Super Simple TCP by Joel Christner. It was an amazing library, really awesome. Uh, so if you get a chance to work with that, please do. Also, if you are watching this video but you haven't gone to the repo yet, if you clone this repo, this link at the very top of the server.original file, that's going to be uh, your key to watching uh, the, uh, or that's going to be your key to getting all the information about how to make this exact same program or almost exact same program. Um, it is by Fox Learn, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there it is, Fox Learn. Uh, so kudos and shout out to them as well for making this really awesome video that was super easy to follow and relatively short. I think it's only like 20 minutes. So if you are looking to learn this really quick, um, then definitely check that out. Uh, but more about my program here. Uh, so this actually started out as a different project for work. Uh, and so this is kind of where I started from. Uh, so I've got basically this server application and client application that work in tandem with one another so that uh, multiple computers or two computers in this case, uh, or I should say in this case, my computer itself can talk to itself over the network. So here on the server application on the right hand side, you'll see that it pre-populates with the web socket up at the top. That's the socket that it's listening on. So the IP address and then of course the port 9001. Uh, over here on the client side, I'm just going to copy that over so that I can talk to the same server. Uh, once I start the server, you'll see the starting message here on the client. I'll go ahead and connect, and you'll notice that it's connected right over here. And so now the server and the client can talk to one another. If I just select the client that I want to talk to and send them a message, it'll populate here on the client side. And likewise, if I send a message to the server, it will populate over here. And so you'll see a, a list of who's talking to who on each one. So kind of a very cool, very simple, but very cool application to help you learn how to use WebSockets properly and TCP servers and all that other stuff, setting up uh, port listeners and all that. Uh, so if you get a chance, definitely watch that YouTube video. Now I made a couple modifications in this video, or I should say in this program after the video, uh, because I noticed that when uh, in the video, at the very end, the applications, once they are connected, what happens, uh, the population of uh, server, or I should say the population of computer names, actually is just IP addresses or WebSockets. And that can be kind of confusing, uh, trying to figure out which WebSocket you want to send a message to. So I added some methods in here uh, to have the computer name populate in the list instead. So first of all, in the client original um, program, I have this... Uh, private string name and that's called local computer name and local computer name is uh, populated by the local get local computer name uh, method and so if I go to that definition you'll see that all it does is it basically just gets the host name from the computer and then it returns it and so it, it, it gives this it tells this program the name of the computer that it's running on all right then in the server once a client is connected, so right here, events client.connected, what it'll do is it will send a message that has at the very beginning of it this word, request name with a plus. Right? And I use the plus as kind of a delimiter so they can like cut the string at, at those different parts. So it makes it a lot easier uh, for the messages back and forth uh, to be chopped up into different pieces. So this was kind of like a very a cheapy way of making a header essentially. So instead of actually making header files and all that other stuff, this is the header right there and it's separated by that plus. I know it's not the best solution, but for what I needed to do here, it worked really well and really quickly. Uh, so anyways, it sends this message that says request name with a plus on it. And then in the client, uh, the client original um, application, once it receives a message, it's going to go through it and it's going to look for that string. If it says request name in the string, then it's going to send back 
this string, name request, that's going to be the new header with a plus, and then it's going to attach to it the local computer name. So the name of the computer that the client is running on is attached to this message with name request as the header. Then back in the server, if it gets that name request, so if the message contains the name request header in it, then what it's going to do is it's going to search for in that string, split it up, and it's going to pull out just the name of the computer. And then when it gets the name of that computer, it's going to store it as the computer name for that particular client. And then it's going to add it to a table that I've made. And that table, of course, is going to be the table of just the clients. And it's going to add it with the IP port, so the WebSocket basically, along with its name. So the IP port ends up being the key, and the computer name ends up being the value. And that table is, of course, up here at the top somewhere. There we go. So this is private dictionary string string table and where the first string is the IP address and the second string is the name. And then from there, the rest of the program works pretty much the same. But instead of uh, showing the list of IP addresses, it shows the list of computer names. And it just does that by, again, searching through the list of connected IP addresses. But for each IP address that is connected, it shows the name from the dictionary instead. So pretty simple in that regard. And that's right here in the uh, if the is null empty, all that stuff, like listing the IP addresses. And of course, the selected item, once, it uh, once uh, somebody selects the name of the computer, again, this method will go through and it will check um, that there is an IP address associated with that name. And then it'll send it to that IP connection or that IP address instead of the name of the computer, because obviously that wouldn't work. So, um, And this uh, for loop is the one that uh, searches through the table looking for the particular computer name and when it finds the name it gets the key that's associated with that name and then the key is where right here the IP connection is where that message is sent so again it works basically the same as the other one it's just I wanted it to be a little bit uh, a little bit more user friendly because the next project that I had to do uh, needed to be very user friendly so again as you can see um, if I start the server and then I start the client, instead of showing the IP address, it shows the name of the computer. That's the name of my computer right now that it's working on uh, currently. So, um, so that's that program. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. And if you download the repo and it turns out to be useful to you, please let me know in the comments. That would be really awesome. I just like to know when my stuff is useful. Um, it's just like, it's really cool to be able to help other people out. So uh, let me know. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video when I talk about the next phase of this development.